it's essential in taking care of patients with chronic pain and, and in taking care of patients especially with chronic pain who have multiple sclerosis to have the skills of a variety of providers available to try to help manage them. So an interdisciplinary team is the only way to go. Each one of us has our own special skills and so I'm a pain specialist. I know the drugs and I know the procedures that are useful for taking care of somebody who suffers from chronic pain, but I'm not a physical therapist. I'm not a neurosurgeon, a neurologist, a psychologist, and I don't want to leave anybody out because I don't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but it's so important to have all of these skilled providers involved in the care of each patient because each one of them will make a difference in impacting and improving the quality of life of patients who suffer from chronic pain. Pain is managed in a combination of ways, definitely with medications and very definitely with non-pharmacological means. Medications that we have at our disposal do work. Anti-epileptic drugs are often used. Anti-epileptic drugs are recognized as drugs that calm down that wild firing of the nerves, limit the calcium and sodium excitatory ions from coming into the cell, and that's how they work. They're very effective. They can have side effects. They can cause drowsiness, sleepiness, off balance, ataxia. And of course, you don't want that because you may already be drowsy, sleepy, and off balance. But given in low doses and combining a couple of antiepileptics with different mechanisms of action is better than having the high dose of one antiepileptic at once. In addition to antiepileptics, antidepressants are often used to manage pain not because the provider thinks you're depressed. Antidepressants are used because of the neurotransmitters that they engender. Pain is an experience that can be modulated. So when we sense pain in our brains, our brains turn around and try to modulate that by neurotransmitters like serotonin and epinephrine uh, and dopamine. If pain is so severe and so overwhelming and all other medications have failed, then the next step would be to go to opiates because people should not suffer pain. Pain needs to be managed. So opiates do have a place, but in the literature, it appears as if opiates are not all that effective. And in order to be effective, they need to be given at high, high doses. And the bottom line with opiates in the clinical trials is that they did not increase quality of life. They may have managed the person's pain, but they didn't make them more active, help them become more part of life, help with their recreation or their relationships at all. And I might suggest that the side effects of opiates may have been the culprit in keeping people from enjoying life fully.